live in the studio. I've got my friends from Fostering Imagination. I want to welcome you guys all on the community council. We'll get your names in a second, but thanks for coming in. Woo-hoo. Thanks, thanks for, having for having us. us. Yeah. Now, you guys are all sharing a mic, which sometimes is a little bit, it's like it's close quarters. You're up in someone's neutral zone, so just feel free to be comfortable. But uh, jump on the mic. I'll just kind of go around the room. Give me your name and uh, what your business is, I guess, with uh, Fostering Imagination, and I'll kind of go from there, okay? Hey, I'm Loretta Jordan, and um, I'm the youth representative of Fostering Imagination. Now, what does a, a youth representative do? I'll tell you this right now, st- starting right off the bat. Fostering Imagination uh, mentors at-risk, displaced fo- uh, foster youth in Los Angeles through free, structured, one-on-one creative arts and social development programs. So go ahead with what exactly uh, you do. What, what was the title again? Youth representative. A youth representative. All yeah. right, so you're, 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 a voice, you're a voice for the kids. Exactly. I've been a part of the program for five years now. Five years now, so I had the opportunity to be in the program and to grow with the program. Good. So since I've been a part of it so long, I'm able to represent the kids because I know where they're coming from sure. and their standpoint. So I basically go into the board meetings and say, hey, the youth is here and listen up and listen to what we need. And, and, um, and I also go in there and I thank you know everybody for doing their part and just... Just there for the youth, exactly. Now, uh, you say you you took part in the program. That's uh, a lot of organizations that come in here have a lot of that. You know, they, we they call them alumni. A lot of people that have gone through uh-huh. all their. Uh, the great programs that they have to offer with whatever organization it is usually come through and want to give back and everything else. Talk about your journey, I guess, uh, uh, at, at that point. What brought you to Fostering Imagination initially? Um, initially, I was interested in theater. I always told my mom, hey, I want to do act. I want to be on screen, all this other stuff. So she ran across this um, flyer from uh, Foster Imagination. She was like, you know, you, um, want me to sign you up? So I was like, yeah, sign me up. And then once I got into it, uh, I was starting out high school. I, mean, I was starting off college. So um, it was just Basically, five years ago, my mom introduced it to me, and I've been a part of it ever since. How cool. So what did you specifically get to do? Did you get to kind of... uh, Oh, yeah. I got uh, everything. Theater, adventure, filmmaking. Like I said, I, I... was able to move up to the board. Wow. So I was in everything. So you were really thriving. Yeah. Were you one of those people who uh, was just looking for uh, some sort of really cool open door or some sort of direction or some sort of opportunity? And uh, um, once you were afforded that, you really kind of ran fast towards yeah. that and did some great things? Uh huh. And then, especially being like the foster care, I don't really, I didn't really have a lot of opportunities. So I was like, hey, this is for me. I have this opportunity. Of course, I'm going to jump on it. Sure. So I went there looking for a pastime, but also, you know, like something to, to get myself in and become a part of, like something I could latch on to. So. Yeah, absolutely. Something you can be passionate about. That's exactly. all we're looking for. We're right. looking for something to make us excited to do every morning when we wake up. Um, okay, I will uh, now go to you on my left. I want to say, um, your name was really interesting when I came in. When you, when, I'm my, a, my, my last name is just as interesting Go, as do first, first and last. <laughs> it's Ilya Haudegi. Ilya Haudegi. Go ahead and talk a little yes. bit more straight into the and mic. And I am the executive director and founder of Fostering Imagination. Okay, so... Um, uh, what was the need? What made you want to do this? Obviously, something uh, you know inspires everybody to usually start one of these organizations. What was it for you? Well, I was actually interning at a, a law firm that represents foster youth in uh, the foster care system, and I knew this population existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really realize uh, what alarming statistics um, that these foster youth are going through. Right. Uh, there's 30,000 foster youth in L.A. County alone, and many of these kids stay in foster care the rest of their lives and they move from place to place and they don't have any stability they don't have nurturing whereas our parents teach are teaching us the basics on how to get a job how to tie our shoelaces right. they don't have these people in their lives so i was really encouraged to start an organization where these kids can get that type of support and that's what we've created we've created not only an organization but a family for these kids now what did you start with <laughs> this is a great question Yay. it's I started with uh, my boyfriend at the time, uh, Eddie, and I, we drove our two rickety cars around and picked up these kids at their various locations throughout Los Angeles, from Compton to South LA to Carson, and we would take them on adventures that they've never been on. These kids never get out of their their little neighborhoods, Sure. Uh, so we brought them out hiking and biking and kayaking, and then we started a theater program, and we got more kids together, and we got more mentors to help us pick up the kids and eventually a wonderful
wonderful organization gave us some money to get a van, and now we're picking up kids throughout Los Angeles. And so when you hear kids saying, you know, especially in the rough <laughs> neighborhoods, that um, you know they're 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 doing everything they they can to get out and stuff, and, and you think that that has such a negative connotation, they're truly just sometimes looking for a way to get out. Like, uh, can I get a ride? Absolutely, <laughs> you know? yeah, absolutely. These kids don't have any transportation. Most of the foster homes, they either don't um, don't drive the foster parents, or they don't care enough to get these kids out into programs. Sure. And our program's a little little all out there. We're in Santa Monica. Um, that's where most of our programs run at a theater called Ruskin Group Theater. And uh, they really provide us the space. And, and the environment is different for these kids as opposed to seeing what they see in those neighborhoods. Right. We're getting out, them out into a neighborhood where they know that it's it, it's a way out. And we're not only providing them a safe, stable environment, but we provide like really great one-on-one mentoring as well. Now, do you, uh, you know, there, there's a big problem. I, I've got a lot of organizations that thank goodness come in here and have lots to say about helping uh, our foster youth here in LA County. What, what, uh, you know, where, where does your stance, how do you help, how does what you guys do uh, translate into what's going on when it comes to the um, emancipated foster youth when they turn 18 and then they, you know, they, they, they move on and have to just kind of like start their life and they not, haven't necessarily built the social skills and all that other stuff that I just, it's, I didn't realize it was such a problem until just recently, I guess, uh, speak I, on that. And I didn't realize it was such a problem until uh, we started these programs and we saw firsthand the statistics of these kids where 40 to 50 percent of these kids, uh, you know, that emancipate from the system and get cut off from support, 40 to 50 percent are going homeless. 40 percent are graduating from high school. And, and for a lot of these kids that aren't graduating from high school, it's really no fault of their own. Uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, technicalities that go into it because they're moving placements and those credits aren't following them. So what we have been doing for the past year is really focusing on this group of kids and we are providing um, assessments for each one of our kids to mm-hmm. figure out what it is they need anywhere from learning how to drive because they don't have the parents to teach them right. uh, to helping them get a job because they're struggling to do that uh, and finding housing because a lot of these kids, there's transitional housing out there, but not all of them qualify and not all of them know about the transitional housing. Sure, sure. So, it, seem, it seems like, um, I guess, all very simple things that need to get done in their lives to uh, really get them on that right train track. And it's just the, the smallest thing not happening uh, for them, I guess, in that respect could really send them in a direction that they don't necessarily deserve to be going in. Absolutely. No fault of their own. Right. Um, okay. Next up, let's let's speak with you. Hi. And you are? I'm Jeanette Yaw. Jeanette. Net. Okay, and talk to me uh, with uh, what your affiliation with uh, Fostering Imagination is. I am on the advisory board with Fostering Imagination. I came, I began, I introduced myself actually to Fostering Imagination because I'm a psychotherapist in West Los Angeles who specializes in working with children in the foster care system gotcha. and children who have been through foster adoption. Um, That's an interesting job right there. Oh, yes. Wow. And you asked, you said, you know, you talk about passion. I'm sure. very passionate about this organization and about working with foster youth because I myself was a former foster youth and I was one of the lucky ones to be adopted at the age of seven and a half. So I know what it's like to be lost and left in a system sure. that isn't providing what a child needs and it what fostering imagination provides is that significant attachment figure that these children need to work through and help them transition through these milestones that when they if they had a regular family would be providing for them so this organization gives them the opportunity to have a one-on-one which is a mentor and that person stays with them and guides them provides them with any needs that they need at the time taking them on trips, teaching them how to put gas in the car. Is it a situation where, you know, it's, it's a, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great turnaround of success because uh, people are, I guess, reaching out to you and, and looking for the resources and looking for the help, or is it um, uh, one of those programs where you're forcing yourself upon someone who might need a mentor? Um, Does that make sense? You know, sometimes you, you, you meet a kid or two who, who they, you know what, they're getting all this trouble, maybe they just need a mentor, and maybe they don't even want a mentor, but they just have to be, they're put in the situation where they're afforded one, uh, as opposed to someone who really knows the opportunities that are out there, they just literally need a ride. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, most of the kids coming in here in Loretta uh, can speak to this want to be a part of something and right. want to be with other youth that have a shared experience because there's a uh, term in the psych 
ecology world, which is what's shareable is bearable. And really, that's what they're providing. This community of foster children who have mentors who have either been through the foster care system, who uh, are mentoring the children, and they can not be alone in the grief and the loss and the pain of having that early separation or late separation from their birth families, which is really traumatic. And they fulfill that need and that love mm-hmm. that provides them that secure attachment, which wow. breeds a healthy relationships sure, in right. the future. Right. I just want to say one point sure. to what the question you asked. There's a lot of kids that start our organization, but we're also dealing with kids between the ages of 12 and 19. They're always, even when they go past 19, they're always a part of our organization. Mm -hmm. They're part of our programs. But during this age, you have some, some, you know, fighting back of of being involved in a family-like environment or a mentoring environment because you want to be independent and you want to grow. So we are working with these youth in those circumstances as well. We give them their space and, but we just let them know that we'll always be here for them. Right, because even a normal, you know, person within that age group that's not, you know, going through a fostering situation doesn't and we really want to talk to the parents about anything Absolutely. specific. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Loretta, yeah. you want to speak on what I was saying? I could tell. Yeah, exactly. Um, to, because um, you know how, you know, since you're a part of a family, you sure. have your own family. In the foster care system, we don't really, we probably have a, um, in a group home. You know, you, you, have, the, you have the staff. Gotcha. You have the staff. And then a lot of times you're in the foster care system. If you mess up with one parent, um, they'll probably say, oh, take you back to the people and be like, well, I can't really deal with them. So then they'll find you in a different home. Or if you're messing up in one group home, they're sending you to a different one. Well, with foster imagination, when we mess up or when we um, need our help and we go to our mentors, they don't just say, okay, well, here go another mentor, see if it'll work out. We can always go back to our FI family and get all the help that we we need. And when we came into the program, to be honest, I really didn't know what to expect at the program. I thought I was going there for theater or adventure or whatever, but it became so much more. It became... It be it wasn't even a program. It wasn't like I was going to theater or anything. I was going to see my FI family. Like people always say, "Oh, you going to with your FI family this weekend?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm going to do my theater stuff mm-hmm. and all this other stuff." So consistency. I just feel like I just feel like a, a lot of it with with, yeah. with what you're saying has to do with uh, you just kind of need that consistency in, in your life to get to start doing the things that you need to get done that you know you need to get done. Yeah, that stability. And I think Loretta's <laughs> talking about fostering imagination provides that family, that yeah. secure base, which they talk about in attachment theory. We need to thrive as indiv- individuals. Right. To be successful. And with this organization, children can do that. They have a secure base and it really provides unconditional love, mm. which what we all want in even a regular family. Right. And that's very important for development. So. Well, it's great. I, 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 over the four years I've been doing this show, I feel like when I first started it, uh, you know, I'd get a lot of organizations that would come in here and I'd think to myself, oh my gosh, you know, all these organizations are working with all these kids in these inner cities and that must be so tough and the, these these kids must be such a battle to work with because they're, you know, they're from the inner cities and that's, that's just what you think. And the more I right. talk, the more organizations I meet, the more I realize that if anything, all these kids are just looking for an open door. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of stability, a little bit of consistency and a little bit of a, of a resource here and there. And uh, next thing you know, they're the least uh, tough people to work with. <laughs> they're the least. They want uh, attention. Yes. They are the acting the out. things, I guess. Which is the stigma that foster kids are mm-hmm. acting out and there's right. a negative stigma. But they're crying out for attention. They're right. crying out because I need the support. I need someone to hear me roar. I need help. Yeah, and help so I, I would say succeed. that so far what I've learned is that uh, there's so many kids out there that, that need that so bad that they, they can't wait to reach out for when it's there and it's a great opportunities or excuse me organizations like yourselves um we were talking about the website address when we first walked in well we want to get a kind of a call to action what do you guys look for when it comes to what you need to do to continue to do the great programs that you have obviously monetary donations is uh is something that everyone is always looking for when they come in here uh there's also lots of volunteer opportunities sometimes we we as as people have extra time on our hands every once in a while maybe not the cash but time talk about where we can get involved there with fostering imagination absolutely the number one way you could help is becoming a mentor for our organization. Like we said, these youth are so wonderful and they will offer you, most of our mentors actually say they get more out of the experience working with our youth than our youth probably get out of the experience. However, we'd like it the other way around. <laughs> uh, but it, it, they, they're such wonderful kids. They're, they're eager to get to know you. They're eager to, to learn about what you do and they want to succeed and they just need a role model, someone 
to be their friend to guide them through those obstacles in life. So number one, a mentor. Mentors, sure. uh, n- next, we uh, job shadowing. If you have a job, you'd like to invite some of our, our kids into your work environment to, to show them what opportunities are out there. That's a mm-hmm. great idea. Uh, internships. Uh, all of our kids, uh, most of our kids are at the age that they're really looking to find themselves and, and providing sure. them an internship and, and letting them know those opportunities as well. And we have a a fabulous event coming up. It's yeah. called Shipwreck, the Rescue Mission. And uh, it's on Saturday, October 9th at 7 o'clock. It's on the Venice Boardwalk, and it's uh, kind of a pirate theme nice. type of event. It's going to be lots of fun. But this, this uh, the idea from this event came from one of our kids, and I hope I don't cry. Uh, mm-hmm. One of our kids said to me not too long ago, she said, if I ever went missing, I don't think anybody would ever know that I was gone. Oh, my gosh. And it's a rescue mission to rescue these kids from the situation that they think that nobody else cares about them in this world. And I want to show her as well as the other kids that we do care and we wouldn't miss you if you were missing. And, um, wow. yeah, so that's kind of, wow. Oh, gotcha. See, it's got a lot mm-hmm. of passion within you. Yeah. You really <laughs> see it. <laughs> and we had, uh, we had one more guest, uh, in the studio. And of course I'm not going to leave you out. There's four of you. <laughs> Everyone gets to talk. Uh, what's your name? What's your affiliation with, uh, fostering imagination? My name is Martha and I am an alumni. At Fostering Imagination. An alumni. Yes. So how old are you? I'm 17 years old. And uh, are you are you currently taking advantage of some great programs that are going on over there? Uh, at this moment, no, but I just finished a play in June. Wow. So how much does something like that change your life? Are you, do you Did you always do plays before? Was this like the first time you had something like this? Well, I did. I was. I wanted to be an actress when I was smaller, but mm-hmm. I didn't. Sorry. It's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, while I was in foster care, I didn't really have the, the chance or no one to motivate me to do anything that I wanted to do. It was sure. just moving. I mean, I was in foster care for four years. And during those four years, I moved at least six times. Oh. And no one ever was there. I didn't have anybody to count on. And my social worker, until I got out, not really much communication. But No, no one there to say, hey, yeah. let, let's, get you, let's get you like to the local theater or something. Right. Let's get you nobody. Gotcha. So, I mean, when I went back with my grandmother, it was like, you know what? I really want to take something that I can just show people this is who I am. This is what yeah. I want to be. And... Luckily, my social worker got me, she got a flyer saying, oh, well, Fostering Imagination is offering some acting classes. I heard that you wanted to be an actress, so here, take it. And I was like, just like Loretta said, I was expecting, okay, so I'm going to go act. Good. Uh, I was never about a person that, oh, I'm going to get attached to whoever I'm, right, I right, made. Of course, right, right, sure. But when I got there, it was different. The first time that we met there, it was like, John Ruskin, he was the first one to open it up and he talked to us and that first time I actually cried and opened up saying, you know what, this is what I feel. This is what I have inside. Sure, sure. And that at that moment I was like, wow, it's not I don't just have a family in my house. I have a family right here. That And is it was a is it crazy? Did you did you feel like uh because you had gone through so much that you are now way tougher than you ever thought you could be and so that you, nothing could break down the walls and that you would probably hold that in, inside forever? Yeah, um because I mean, again, it's not I don't have now that in case if I fall, I have people to catch me. It's not that if I fall, boom, I'm going to hit my butt, you know? Sure. Yeah. I, mean, I love it. That's it's great. Like That's great. I can count. If I have anything to do uh, or I have, I want to go somewhere, I can call Ilya. I can call Eddie. I can call anybody I, and say, hey, I just don't want to be at home. I want to be somewhere else. Just take me out, for God's sake. Yeah. And I love it. Right it's, it's funny. I, I, I'm a, uh, I've, I, I was a father of really young. I was 21 years old when I had my, my daughter, and um, I... I've always told my friends I was always the first one out of all my friends to have a kid and everything else and I am a like super focused my little daughter's up behind me right Aww. here she's actually here somewhere running around but um, uh, I, I, I've, I've always told my friends when they when they have a kid and when they're gonna, going to have a kid and whatever and they're always worried about it and I say look at the end of the day all you really truly have to do as a parent especially as a dad is just be around just always be there yeah. you don't even have to go out of your way and learn how to say things right just be around and be there because that's because these kids 
kids just need that. They just need to know that you're there when they need you and that you're never going to not be there when they need you. And uh, sometimes the smallest things like that get them to thrive the exact way that you would like them to thrive as a, as a father. And I'm a very proud father because my daughter's doing great, too. Um, just, so, just like you are, sweetheart. Well, um, I, well, go ahead, sweetheart. Go ahead, well, Loretta. Um, that's why the, um, when Ilya was opening up the opportunity to become a mentor or whatever, that's why um, that's another thing why I like so much about the program is that um, – we have space for, you know, more people to join us so it can grow. And the way that, you know, they approach us is always, you know, fun activity. You know, you got to be a mentor. You got to, you know, mentor with math or something. You got to sit down in one place and really try to get oh, get in, in tune with the child. Well, like, we have this camping trip coming up this weekend. And, um, and, and that's going to be a great opportunity for just us to be around the mentors and be able to, to get skills on you know, like survival since we're going to be out in the wilderness. Sure, sure. And then whatever we learn there, we can apply it to our lives because, you know, eventually it's going to happen once we emancipate. So that's why that's so like you're saying you're saying you could you could be from from any walk of life to be a mentor because every person has something with them something that they could share with somebody else and and, and help you get better in or exactly. help you learn from or and something the way like we that do it is like no other it's, it's crazy I love it man this is great what we're gonna do is put all your guys information up on the website especially about your little event also that I, I know you got coming up and uh, next time you have something great coming up on the calendar just give us a call you don't have to make it all the way down here I know that uh, the drive is tough sometimes to get all the way down uh, to this section but um, we can put all that stuff on the website get a calendar reminder all that stuff Go ahead. I just want to say one thing. Yes. I was thinking about on the drive here that there's no place like home. And then I thought, you know what? There's no place like home and there's no place like fostering imagination. Like that. Oh, you guys are so cool. Ah. <laughs> This has been the KISS FM Community Council. If you would like information on guests that appeared on the Community Council, go to KISFM.com. Keyword Council. The KISS FM Community Council is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. The KISS FM Community Council is a presentation of the Public Affairs Department of 102.7 KISS FM Los Angeles.